Kia ora e te whanau, koreana tēnei. I'm a lawyer in New Zealand and this video is going to be a goodie because I'm going to be educating you on standard criminal procedure in the criminal courts of New Zealand. In other words, what happens when you go to court? What is the process? What is the procedure? Let's go. This is our cues for the purposes of this video. We are going to call him Tamati. Tama for short. He is known as the defendant appearing before the criminal court. Now the allegation is, is that Tama has been drinking with his cousin Ethan. Okay. Ethan for this purpose is our victim. Tama's been drinking at Ethan's, they've broken into an altercation. Tama's taken an umbrella and assaulted Ethan, mm, semi-brutally. And then he's jumped in Ethan's car, driven off up the road, drunk, and been pulled over by a cop. Another cop radios through that Tama's assaulted Ethan and that he's also stolen Ethan's car. The officer with Tama can tell that he's been drinking, breathalyzes him, he's way over, so he charges him firstly with EBA. Basically, that's his drink driving charge. He then proceeds to take him down to the station where he is further charged with assault, with intent to injure, and unlawful taking of a motor vehicle. Thomas sobers up in the cells and police then police bail him to a future date, sorry, of 31 July. This will be Thomas' first appearance at court. Thomas is gonna to come to court, okay, at usually 9 a.m. He's going to find a duty solicitor who's going to help him appear in front of a registrar normally rather than a judge. Then police are going to give Tama his initial disclosure. This is basically the basic case against him, okay? This will be a summary of facts outlining what happened that night, the allegations pretty much, and the charging documents. Here, Tama will likely be placed on court bail okay and given a legal aid application to apply for legal aid if he qualifies or the opportunity to find him a private lawyer to start representing him because now he's got the initial disclosure he's got the paperwork he needs to go to a lawyer after this tama is going to be remanded for three weeks on bail to further appear at a second appearance now this second appearance is also likely to be in front of a registrar and this is where Tama is required to enter a plea, either a guilty plea or a not guilty plea. Now if Tama enters no plea, then that will be an assumed not guilty plea. After seeing the summary of facts, Tama's response is that he is not guilty to the assault. He says Ethan attacked him with the umbrella and that he only jumped in Ethan's car to get away because he came on Ethan's car as he'd been borrowing it for the last two weeks. He therefore says it wasn't theft, nor was it assault. However, Tama is willing to admit he was drunk when he was driving, so he will plead guilty to the EBA charge only. Tama is then remanded to a further court date in the future called case review hearing. His guilty charge also just follows along because it won't be sentenced or disposed of until they know what's going to happen with the not guilty charges. And further, Tama intends to apply for a special application to keep his license because he was saying that even though he drove while drunk, he did so under special circumstances. He had to get away from Ethan, the psycho. Now, between the second appearance and the case review hearing, it's expected that police meet with defence and see what issues they might be able to resolve among themselves. They decide on this occasion that, no, Tama says something else, Ethan says something else, so they need to proceed to trial. They need to know how many witnesses they will need to call. They will need to know how much time they have for the trial so that when they get to case review, they can ask the judge for just that. Between the second appearance and case review, Tama will continue to be on court bail. Also note that at this meeting, which is known as the case management meeting, they might also plea bargain, okay? So this is where police might say something like, 
all right, if Tim is willing to plead guilty to a common assault rather than assault with intent to injure, we'll amend the charges to dispose of the case. This hasn't taken place on this occasion, but that's the type of place where plea bargains can happen. So Tamar and his lawyer show up to case review hearing. They let the judge know that they need a three hour trial to hear all the evidence. Now this is where if the charges are serious enough, you can elect either trial by jury or judge alone trial, which is known as a JET. On this occasion, Tamar wants to proceed to a judge alone trial. They say they need three hours and they list the available dates. It is then put off to December 2023 for them to prepare the case in the interim and get all the evidence gathered. By now, Tama has appeared in the court one, two, three times before finally getting to his trial date. It gets to Tama's trial date and Ethan produces a witness, his neighbour, Luther. Now, Luther corroborates Ethan's version of events. Further, Luther last minute produced CCTV, which further corroborates what Luther and Ethan are both saying. It's over for Tama. He's found guilty on both charges. So Tom is found guilty. He's now guilty across all his charges. He is proceeding to another court date. It's been adjourned on bail again to a sentence date. Now this sentence date is set down for Jan 2024. Some things happen along the way and this all goes towards discounting that final sentence. First, Tama has accepted that he's guilty and expressed genuine remorse. He's written an apology letter to Ethan and he's also given him a donation to show how genuinely sorry he is. Tama's lawyer has also organised a Section 27 cultural report, which basically outlines how Tama was raised in a very alcoholic home with lots of domestic violence and that this is some of the factors that have given rise to his offending. Due to those issues, he has enrolled in a rehab program to rehabilitate where alcohol is concerned. He is also receiving some personal counselling. When it gets the sentence, Thomas shows the court all of these things. He receives a certain discount for his remorse. He also receives a discount for the Section 27 report and its findings, as well as the programs that he has undertaken to date and taking the counselling. He receives a further discount for having a clean criminal history, having no prior offending, and he also receives an early guilty plea discount of 25% for the guilty plea entered on the EBA charge. There's also been a pre-sentence report done, known as PAC report, by corrections that further corroborate the findings of the cultural report and make a recommendation for a community-based sentence. Tama is ultimately sentenced to community-based sentences of home detention for 12 months, supervision, and community work. However, in order to carry out his sentences that he's received, he does need to stay engaged with corrections and his probation officer until they end. And then that will mark the end for Tama and his criminal journey. So that is criminal procedure in a nutshell for district criminal court matters. Please note that this doesn't apply to specialist courts such as youth court or the drug and alcohol court or uh, the domestic violence court. Those follow slightly different trajectories based on the fact that they're specialist. You get the gist. And the most important thing to know is that outcomes don't usually happen straight away in the district court. Actually, with EBA, it can happen straight away. You can appear and get sentenced on the same day. It usually takes a few goes to get everything prepared and get everything resolved in a just and proper way. And I actually named the defendant Tama because that's my little brother's name. And he was a little host or two back in his day. And I just want to taunt him. Anyway, like and follow for more legal TikTok.